What's going on YouTube? Welcome to a commentary that will help you win more free-for-all games. Black Ops 2 is the most team-based Call of Duty yet, and by far the most competitive in regular matchmaking, because you're rewarded more score streaks for objective play and the matchmaking is skill-based, meaning the game tries to put you in lobbies with players of similar skill level. So this is exactly the type of team-oriented play I've always wanted out of Call of Duty, because more and more people are playing in parties and playing with mics, but when you want to get away from the team play for a little bit, Free For All is definitely the place to go if you don't feel like playing sharpshooter or gun game. You also rank up your guns and unlock attachments for them faster than in any other playlist, because at least for me, I get more kills per minute in Free For All than in any other mode. I started to get addicted to Free For All in Modern Warfare 3, and since then, the only game mode that I have more playtime in is Domination. I very rarely finish outside of the top 3, and it's been pretty much the case in Black Ops 2 so far. After this quick gameplay that's wrapping up, I'm going to walk you through one of my faster gameplays, 30 and 5 on Carrier using the M27 Assault Rifle. I chose that gameplay not because it's perfect, but because it has good examples of fundamentals you should learn if you want to succeed at Free For All, as well as some mistakes to avoid. Black Ops 2 is definitely a very submachine gun driven game, but you can succeed with assault rifles if you play to their advantages. After I explain my class setups, I'll run through the game play by play and explain why I do what I'm doing and how my mistakes could have been avoided. So I hope my upcoming play by play breakdown will help you win more free for all and get fast rushing gameplays. The gameplay that you're seeing right now isn't necessarily the best to analyze or talk about because in any game in which you get a really high score streak in free for all like a VSAT or a stealth chopper which I pull off this game, it just means absolute dominance on your part. There wasn't very much the enemy team could do against you and by the time you get a really high score streak, the game's probably already over. It takes 11 kills without hardline to get a stealth chopper and by then the stealth chopper will do most of the rest of the work for you. I think in this game I get at least 10 kills off of my stealth chopper so there wasn't very much I had to do after I got my stealth chopper. So on a more consistent basis, I definitely recommend you run lower score streaks. UAV is by far the most helpful. Anything else is up to you, but definitely run UAV. All right, now let's get into the main gameplay breakdown. In this class, I'm running the M27 with red dot sight, fast mag, and quick draw handle with primary gunfighter as one of my wild cards. My tier 1 perk is hardline, my tier 2 perk using perk 2 greed is toughness and cold blooded, and finally rounding out the class is tactical mask as my tier 3 perk. The M27 is unique in that it has the lowest recoil out of all the assault rifles, so it's like the ACR from Modern Warfare 3. The main problem with this class is that I don't have suppressor or stock unlock for the M27, but like I said earlier, free for all is the best place to go to work on individual gun unlocks. Suppressor is important for free for all because you don't want 7 people rushing your position after you show up on the radar because you fire with an unsuppressed weapon, and stock is helpful because it allows you to round corners at full speed, something that the SMGs can do without stock. Before you spawn, you want to be thinking of a good opening rush route based on where your enemies are going to spawn. I know that somebody's going to spawn in the room overlooking BDOM, so I rush it and catch them off guard, and the other person that I just killed got attracted to gunfire showing up on their radar because we're firing with unsuppressed weapons. Whenever you are playing with an unsuppressed weapon, you definitely want to check your back and check your corners as soon as you fire because Call of Duty has a very aggressive spawn system, and it wants to spawn people close in proximity to you, so people will definitely know where you are. And here I see a red dot on my radar, and he's not in that room, so I know a common camping spot is underneath the stairs. I pull out my combat knife for the kill so that I don't show up on the radar. And you see how I'm checking every corner as soon as I fire. This is just basic first person shooter fundamentals for me to take cover behind the barrels and expose as little of myself as possible while shooting at the opponents. I get my hunter killer drone and I call it in, but now I finally unlocked stock for the M27, one of the most important attachments for assault rifles to keep you moving at fast speed so that you can duck in and around cover quickly. Call of Duty definitely wants you to be as mobile as possible. Now here's where I make my first mistake. I have less than a full clip of ammo in my gun. I should have picked up another weapon because in this class I don't have a secondary weapon. And right here, if I had another weapon ready to go, I might have been able to counter snipe and avoid being taken out. I don't get a stealth chopper this game, but I think I could have gotten an even better score if I ran a lower score streak, like a UAV. I think I could have gotten 30 and 2 or 30 and 1 even. Here's an upcoming really nice 2 piece. In this next clip, I make my next major mistake of the game. Remember the area under the stairs that people like to camp, people like to watch flags there, people like to watch objectives there, and I should have been aware of that. I had killed somebody else earlier in the game, and I got taken out. He had the place of advantage, and I was stupid. In free-for-all, 
I think listening to your headset for footsteps matters more than in any other team-based mode besides Search and Destroy. Search and Destroy is quiet enough of a mode that you can hear footsteps. I don't have my awareness perk unlocked, but I definitely want to try out awareness and see how much I can listen to footsteps better. Here I take revenge on the camper that killed me earlier. I'm using basic first-person shooter tactics. Expose as little of yourself as possible to the enemy when you're shooting back at them. That's why I'm taking cover behind the barrel. After that drop shot, I get this really, really nice turn on. Watch this here. I think I could have gotten that better if I had awareness unlocked and heard his footsteps from farther away. This is stupid. When I get killed here, I should have crouched and gotten to a safer area before rushing to call in my hunter killer. And this is another nice turn on, just pure reaction. I mean, who really knows how far I could have gotten on that streak if I hadn't gotten taken out by that sniper as I was calling in my hunter killer. But calling in your kill streaks, you have fast hands to help you call them in faster. But definitely take cover. Right there, that was stupid on my part. I had enough bullets in my gun to maybe take out that guy without reloading. Fortunately for me, I catch him off guard as he's sprinting because I spawn in close proximity to him. But definitely don't reload after every kill until you're sure you're in the clear. And that goes along with the idea of staying in cover to call in your kill streaks. The M27 has a fast enough reload time that, um, Fast Mag isn't 100% necessary. This is a nice shot, just tap firing. But I know I'm showing up on the radar because I'm firing with an unsuppressed weapon. That's why you have to always be on the move, especially when your weapon is unsuppressed. I take out the combat knife for the kill because the combat knife is a faster kill time in close quarters than the M27 assault rifle. And here I get extremely lucky. This guy, if he was a better player, he would have taken me out. This choke here, there's no explaining it other than the fact that I knew I was closing in on 30 kills and I still couldn't get over the fact of how lucky I got the kill before. Always, always stay on the move when you're firing with an unsuppressed weapon. If your opponent doesn't have a suppressed weapon, they're going to show up on the radar too and people are going to be rushing your position because your opponent showed up on the radar even if you have a suppressed weapon. So this upcoming maneuver I want to show you, you definitely have to learn this. It's jumping around corners instead of just cornering regularly. I pull off the headshot there for a corner jump drop shot. This move is especially important if you don't have stock unlocked for your assault rifle because you move so slow around corners without stock. On screen right now are annotation links to two Call of Duty Tactics videos. The first on the left is a video about how to drop shot if you're not familiar with the drop shotting technique in Call of Duty. And on the right is a video about how to better control your gun and manage recoil. I hope these tips help. I'll be sure to do more of these free for all breakdowns. Be sure to leave this video a like rating if it helped you. Subscribe to my channel for more Call of Duty and have a great day.